Chad Russell along with Mike Taylor here, our special guest, Brian Wright. It is uh, Power Hour, <laughs> and we want to thank uh, our sponsors tonight. Uh, as always, North Grove uh, Brewers here in Montague. Stop on out and say hi to us. Also, Van Dyke Mortgage at Shepherd and Shepherd. So looking forward to a fun show. It's always fun with our good friend Brian. Don't get a chance to see him very often. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thanks, John. Thanks, Mike. Good to see you guys. Well, that, you say that now, but give us about an hour. <laughs> You'll change your opinion in 10 minutes. <laughs> well, you two, unfortunately, have known each other for a long time, so I'm going to let Michael hang in the introductions here because he can only he's going to give you the official Mike Taylor introduction. Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, it, it, it's always great. to. I, I miss that so much, you know, talking to Brian because we taught for so many years together. In fact, my, my last four or five years teaching, I was in the same building with Brian, and, you know, we had a great time. But, you know, he hails from Ravana, Michigan, and uh, was a phenomenal high school athlete, went on to Grand Valley State University, had a very good career there, got right into high school uh, uh, teaching and coaching. I think, I think we've got a break in the action. And we'll be back after a word <laughs> from our sponsors, <laughs> Ecker and Becker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> See, that's what happens when we... Uh, legendary baseball coach over at, uh, over at Shelby. Our sponsors today, of course, as always, North Grove Brewers, and Mortgage, and Shepard and Shepard. I'm going to turn the floor over to Mike Taylor. He's two hours of each other for, I don't know, five, ten minutes, something like that, Mike. Um, Brian was my probation officer for the <laughs> last 15 and a half years, and uh, last I the street narrow because of him, and I thank him kindly. Brian uh, comes from uh, Ravana by way of Grand Valley, and as a high school coach and uh, teacher, a uh, Hall of Famer since the year 2008, and uh, uh, my last few years of teaching were with Brian, and boy, were they enjoyable, and you know, we talk so much about sports in general, and sports psychology, it just, you know, it, his, his uh, knowledge base is just incredible, and you know, they, they say you can't teach old dogs new tricks, and they're wrong. He taught me a lot. So it's welcome, uh, Brian. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike and John. Like I say, I, I really appreciate for what you guys do for area sports and this right here. It's, it's special. You guys do a great job. Well, Brian, uh, you know, coming out of Ravana High School, it just proves, you know, you were labeled the eighth wonder of the world. How'd you get that tag? <laughs> no, I didn't quite get that tag. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a uh, very enjoyable four years at Ravana before it, I went on to Grand Valley. You know, when, when I, I'm going to just start this off a little bit, Brian. You know, locally, I mean, throughout the west side of the state of Michigan here, and, you know, every high school baseball program knows about you. You coach multiple sports, number one, and were successful at every sport you ever coached. And if I would have been smart... I would have had you as my coordinator, and I'd still be coaching, okay? <laughs> but, you know, talk to us at a, at a young age, growing up in Ravana, you know, walk us through your, 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 you know, your upbringing with your parents at a young age. Your, your dad and mom, did they believe in sports? And at what age did you get involved in playing youth league baseball and the support your parents get? Talk to us about that. We, uh, I started when I was old enough to put a glove on and a football helmet. With, that's all we did at Ravana, you know. And uh, my dad coached me, I think, every, every year except once I got in high school. You know, just gave me that love of baseball. And 
all the other sports. I mean, we were all seasonal kids then. If it was basketball season, we played basketball, football, and so on and so forth, you know. And we just had a phenomenal group of kids that grew up with at Ravana, you know. And, uh, and we just, we loved it. We just lived for sports in Ravana, you know. In small town, that's what it's all about, you know. And, and I was fortunate enough our senior year, we made it all the way to state finals. And the whole town went crazy. You know, it's almost like they shut the town down in the districts and regionals. And so it was a wonderful place, wonderful place to grow up at. Well, that's, you know, and, and how about your brothers and sisters? Yep, I've got, I've got three, two older brothers, an older sister and a younger sister. And uh -oh. same thing. I know. Now but, we're finding out about the older yeah, brother yeah. syndrome, John. <laughs> okay. No, and, they were all big time sports people, you know, played it. Just, you know, I think it was weird about my mom and dad, you know. I played four, three different sports in high school, and they missed one contest, a JV football game at Scottville, in all of four years, you know, so it was just incredible. You Were know, you so. the only athlete? In nope, all, everybody, all the brothers and sisters played. You know, my older ones, you know, I think my, when my older sister was there, they didn't even have all of the sports, you know, but, um, but yeah, they were all athletes, and so it was just, it was just, we did that as a family, you know. I mean, my mom would hit me fly balls in the backyard, you know, when Dad was at work. So it was just a family thing. At what, at what age uh, did you think that you might want to get into coaching? I mean, I know you're so busy playing, but even as a kid, did you think, you know, I might someday I might want to do this? Yeah, you know, it was around junior, senior year in high school. You know, everybody had that dream. I wanted to be a professional baseball player. Right. What kid didn't, you right. know? And well. I realized I wasn't quite going to make that, yeah. you know. And well, uh, not going to play forever, no, right? No, exactly. And it's just <laughs> something I always wanted to teach and coach ever yeah. since I, you know, once I got to college. So luckily enough, I was, I landed a job and I've been at Shelby every year since. Who were your mentors growing up as far as, uh, I guess, you know, obviously your parents and, and life and all that stuff, but, uh, but in terms of, of sports and things like that, are people you looked up to? Yeah, you know, in, in coaching, I'm going to lean toward baseball and Walt Golkowski was one of my best friends and Walt and I just, you know, I've, I've run so many things by him, you know, and we just have gone back and forth. We coached together in the Clippers for six years, you know, so I would consider him probably my top mentor. In middle school, you know, now you're getting into the, uh, into the portion of your life in middle school where you are having, you know, actual coaches. And, uh, you know, how did, how did you handle that? I mean, were you, did you handle discipline well? Was there discipline in your house growing up? Oh, very much so, very much so. And we, I played for an eighth grade basketball coach. His name was Ken Niemeyer. You know, God love him. He, uh, I was actually one of his pallbearers. Joe Clutt and I were, were, were two of his pallbearers when he passed away my senior year in high school. And he was just a hard-nosed kind of basketball coach, and I just kind of loved that. In high school, I played for Doug Coe in football. Doug was a hard-nosed kind of guy, you know. And so I just, those guys, I just, I think that really made me want to get into it even more. You know, I just... I idolize those guys, you know, yeah. and uh, just were kinda, your parents okay with that type of coaching? Yes, back in the day. That was I'm gonna, it. I'm going to say back in the day, whatever the coach says, yeah. that's going. I never forget a high school basketball game. We all wore our, the socks that had blue up on top because Ravana. For some unknown reason, we're playing Grant. I come out with all white. Halftime, my coach just lit me up. You know, he said, "What are you doing? Aren't, aren't you a part of this team? You need to change those socks." I didn't say a word. I quickly changed those shot socks and got right back out there, you know. And today, we have to be careful how we do that. You know that. And it's. Uh, do we have to talk about today? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't relate. I know. I it's, can't relate. It's, it's, you know, we could have that conversation about how through the course of time it's changed. And, uh, you know, I mean, you know, it, today it seems like, so, you know, that's a whole different show right yeah. but being sports specific today has an entirely different meaning than it did right when, right. when we grew up right and, and you and know I'm not saying that's all bad either Mike because I think there were times even my early years of coaching I probably I might have addressed too much maybe as a whole group rather than calling Johnny over and say you know yeah. come on Johnny blah 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 you know and so. right well and again in a smaller school you share athletes. Right, exactly. That's a big part of it. I mean, exactly. you don't have 1,500 kids to choose from. Yep, sure. correct. You know, you mentioned that, uh, you know, you had success and go to the, the state uh, state championship, state finals right. at, at Ravana. And something that I found covering this area, and it's true of Ravana, it's true of Shelby, it's Montague, the, the small town. I've always loved that. And like you said, it's it really 
the last one out of town turn out the lights when when there is a big event. Isn't exactly, it? exactly. What's it's it just, like growing up in that in that in that atmosphere? It's the, it's the only it's the only type of environment I've been around because yeah. from Ravana to Shelby is so similar, you know. Right. And uh, so I've never actually been in a big big city type environment, but. I just think it's so neat when you go to the grocery store, someone might say, hey, nice game the other night, or yeah. whatever, your team's playing well, or that's just kind of neat, you know, and I think yeah. it's neat for kids. I remember my, both my, you know, my two oldest played sports at Shelby, and they love that, you yeah. know, so. Now, take us from, um, from Ravana to, to college. What was that? Were you getting any looks, uh, scholarships, that sort of thing? You know, I had some looks. We, I didn't ha really have many offers. It didn't seem like they threw out the money they did, they uh -huh. do today. Um, you know, at state finals, Central's coach invited me as a preferred walk-on, and I just didn't know if that was going to be the right fit. And it was I still didn't know really where I was going to go. I was all set to go to Muskegon Community. Mm -hmm. Three weeks before school started, they canceled the baseball program huh. for a number of years. Huh. I'm thinking, oh, no, what? You know, yeah. so all of a sudden, a, a scout out of Grand Rapids, who's a good friend with Phil Regan at Grand Valley, said, where are you going, Brian? I said, well, as of right now, no, I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. He said, well, I'll, I'll call Phil Regan, and he set up a lunch. Next thing you know, it, I was enrolled at Grand Valley, and I went there for four years. So, First of all, i got to ask you, what's it like to be with Phil Regan? For those that don't know, they're a little bit younger. He was nicknamed the Vulture. He was one of the first really true relief pitchers. He was, exactly. And, uh, he uh, played, had a heck of a career, and then a, a great career as a, as a pitching coach, and I believe he even spent some time as a major league manager yeah. a little bit. So when you're sitting down talking to him, obviously about college, is your mind going gaga? Wow, this is Phil so Regan I'm talking at to. At first, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it you did. asked for an autograph before yeah. <laughs> lunch, you know. I got a baseball card for me. So. <laughs> but it was it was fun. It was fun playing. You could tell though, Phil was old school. Yeah. There wasn't much breakdown. You know, we, uh, everything was done whole the way a lot of times they do in the major leagues. You know, right. and uh, but it was very enjoyable to this day. We still keep in touch. You know, he actually I think oh, he's eighty. He he's eighty three and just. Yeah. Coached another year down in the Dominican in winter wow. ball at wow. 83 years old. That's you know, amazing. So. That's amazing. So you're going to Grand Valley then, right? Yep. Uh, and yep. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, your years at Grand Valley. They were fantastic years. It, uh, we were in a situation where after my freshman year, our, the field house was condemned. Was, they, they shut it down. It started leaking. So, I mean, we you look back and think what we did. We'd get up at 5 o'clock. We'd take a bus to Jenison. Or we'd take a bus to a facility in, in Grand Rapids as a team, you know, and we just had some really great years. Two years we won the the GLIAC. Yeah. Two years we came in second, but then those are the years we won the we won the regional. So it was fantastic memories. Fantastic memories. Did you um at that time did you know what you wanted to do when you got out of college? I mean I mean I wanna teach and I wanna coach. Is that I mean, or did it take a, a year or two in college, you know, to figure out, you know, this is what I want to do. My junior year in high school, our English literature teacher named Pat Ripley, she said, what are you going to do, Brian? I said, well, I want to, I want to teach. I want to coach. She goes, well, any idea what you want? She goes, have you ever thought about going into elementary education? There are not a lot of men in that. And I said, no, not really. So she kind of got the ball rolling, and well, I, you know, I signed up at Grand Valley. And right then I knew I wasn't, I wasn't going to go to the MLB, you know. And uh, I wanted to get a teaching job and a, and a coaching job. So. Lucky enough, I fell into that. So, we're going to take a quick time out here, and then we'll come back and continue our jury, uh, journey with uh, with Brian Wright. We'll be back right after this. <coughs> Van Dyke Mortgage, we, you know, we started uh, 1987, July of 1987, the company was founded here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We recruited Mario in to join our company as one of our uh, branches to serve the Muskegon community. Uh, he has grown to uh, five locations, uh, serving people up and down the lake shore. A lot of companies, they're sometimes in it more for themselves and closing that deal for just their monetary reward. And I think with Mario and his company, it's not just that. And I don't know if that always happens in our world. Here at uh, North Grove Brewers, it's a power hour. John Russell and Mike Taylor here. Our special guest is uh, Brian Wright. We also want to thank Van Dyke Mortgage and Shepard and Shepard. Mike? Well, you know, Brian, it, um, <clears throat> we look at the game of baseball, and it's funny how it has a bite, a grip on kids when they're little. They get into the baseball cards. They get into, you know, I mean, and back then, you knew every player on your professional team that you supported. Right. 
You know, right? I can't even know you. I can't name you today, but a dozen players in the league. But back then, when you're growing up, you listened to the radio. And you every, watched them whenever they were and on every TV. Every Saturday, you watched the game of the week yeah. on NBC. You know, you didn't want to miss it. Absolutely. You know? But you not only knew the, you not only knew the the players on the team you were rooting for. You knew the league. I know. I know. You knew the league. I know. I agree. You I agree. followed the trades, everything. Now it seems like it's more regionalized. You know, they talk about that on TV. You know, right. where more people are watching football today than they are, you know, baseball. And whether that's from fantasy football or whatever, you know, and it's once a week. I don't know. There's so many games now on TV and baseball. I mean, yeah. I almost get to the point where I don't watch a full game because I'm watching three innings of this game. I might watch four innings of that game. <laughs> right. You know, so right. it's just kind right. of. You know, and, and was there, was there a, I mean, you talk about uh, coaches, you know, you take away certain parts of different coaches, you know, and that's what you know, forms you as a coach. Right. Who did you take stuff away from? Who are your coaches that you look at and say, you know, when I when I look back at my style or I look at my style of coaching, I see a lot of these coaches. You know, when we were, during my, those formative years, it seems like when I really was into it, you know, Sparky Anderson for the Tigers was just one of those guys that I just, you know, in college baseball on TV was, they never had college baseball on TV then. You know, now they, thank goodness they have it, you know. So it right. was all MLB, you know, and I just, Probably it's because of Detroit, naturally a big Tiger fan, but I love, you know, the way I followed Sparky Anderson, you know. So. Yeah. Oh, let's talk about your time at, uh, I'm assuming, your first job out of college. Is it Shelby, or kind of give us a, your journey from, from G, uh, GVSU? Gotcha. When I graduated from Grand Valley, there was not a teaching job available. Wow. So I, uh, and I was living in Ravana, and actually the principal at the high school by the name of Joe Yaw, he, he umpired in the Muskegon City League, and he got to know me, blah, 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 and said, what are you going to do, Brian? I said, well, I don't have a full-time teaching job. He goes, well, why don't you come up to Shelby? Yeah. I'll, get, I'll put you to work subbing four or five days a week. You can coach as many sports as you want. So, so I journeyed up, and I subbed for three years in Shelby about four days a week. And then I subbed, gosh, and I coached middle school football, JV boys basketball, and varsity baseball, okay. you know, the first, you know, first part of the, you know, <laughs> then. So, you know, I look back, and I just wish I could do some of those baseball teams over because – I wasn't a very good coach when I first started out. You know, you think you come out of college and, oh, boy, I'd like to redo some years, you know. But, you know, it's funny when you, when you look back as coaches, and we talk about this a lot, <clears throat> some of your greatest jobs of coaching, years of coaching, are not with the most talented team. It's with the team that have the least amount of talent. But you know what? You really did a whiz-bang job to get them to overachieve. Exactly. I, I totally agree with that. I do. I think whether it be basketball, baseball, football I'm sure you know you do you you sometimes are just fighting tooth and nail to to stay competitive and then maybe win one of those close ones you yes. know and some of those years when you know when we had some phenomenal teams it, it didn't seem like I'm not saying you don't work as hard but those little things you know so I totally agree with that talk to us a little bit about uh, your time at Shelby it's 41 years right yeah this is my 41st year, first year teach uh, coaching this is year 38 oh, teaching man, year 38 teaching so you're talking you, you're your players have anybody been. can have a shortened career <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and in, in a town like shelby i mean you're talking you're coaching kids that uh, kids of kids that, that played for you yeah and maybe even knocking on the door of grandkids probably, exactly yeah. oh no doubt one of my I, I think of the the smiths and mike knows the smith family i mean i coached randy smith and then randy's kids and his grandkids i mean it was like almost went down five, you know four generations you know so it's which is kind of neat you get to get to know families yeah. you know stuff like that and uh so yeah it's just uh it's just crazy that it doesn't seem like i've been there that long yeah. i think when i say that i think that's a good fit to saying that i was in the right place sure. you know did you ever think about going into administration i mean because you're you're an, you're a leader i mean a natural leader and respected at that and i mean you say well you know i I'm going to kick this around a little bit i haven't mike i never really wanted to it was just something i just loved being in the classroom I love coaching, you know, I've heard coaches speak along the way, you know, make, wherever you're at, put those feet on the ground and make it your big time. And it is. For me, Shelby's my big time, you know, it's just, and I just, I've enjoyed it. I've loved it here every year, you know, so. I know it's 41 years, but kind of go through some of the, the highlights, some of the, some of the teams. And I don't want, no. I, don't, I don't mean to make you pick favorite no. teams because I know. Right, every, exactly. Every team is special in right. way, but just kind of give us the, the thumbnail sketch, the highlights, the things you're always going to remember. I think, you know. I was able to coach my son four years oh, varsity sweet. baseball. That was kind of, that was a neat time. That was a neat time, Joshua, and uh, and he was on one of those teams. 
in 2003, Aaron Gowell was a player in that year. He was a senior, you know, senior that year. And uh, we won our first 25 games. We were 25-0 and 0 to start the year, which is just unheard of. Yeah. You know, a bad hop here or, right. a, you know, a bloop. And Spring Lake beat us. And we were ranked one all year, and Morley Stanwood was two. And uh, we met in the opening game of the regionals, and they beat us. I don't even, gosh, I can't remember what the score was, 5-3, yeah. something like that, you know. But just a incredible bunch of, you know, athletes. There are a lot of kids that went on and played some college basketball. They baseball. had a great year in football with that yes, group, too. It was just exactly. a, like you said, it was just a very talented group. Yep. Uh, 2010 was, was a team that had by far, well, had the best record ever at Shelby. It was a year with Trent Fell and the, Kyle Plummer and – there was just so many. We were 34 and six. We got beat in the quarterfinals that year by Bath. They beat us one to nothing. And uh, but there's just been so many, so many really good teams, you know, along the ways. And and we started out though. I'll tell you, it was when I moved there. Our field didn't have a dugout. It didn't have any fences. There were no JV team, you know. Wow. So it was. It's kind of neat just to see it, you know, how it's you know improved the along the way you yeah. know which makes you appreciate it yeah exactly and you know it, it's you you mentioned morley i remember back in the day even going back into the 90s when ron ford was over right there, they were oh they gosh. Were a formidable team. exactly and, exactly uh, every year ron had unbelievable hitting teams yep yep how do you deal with you know in today's uh athletic environment it's this with the budget cuts and the and the financial crunch I mean, you're forced to do, okay, we've got a little fundraiser going here. But the one thing I've noticed is, you know, you've always provided your kids with the best equipment. You know, you always have a very successful alumni game, yep. you know, where you get guys coming back. And that I hear guys talking about that all I the know. time. That's something we, we, did, we, we haven't done it the last three years. And it's something I actually had some guys text me the other day, and they want to get that going again. It was, we had a couple of years where there were, they were in weddings or they were in softball tournaments and the numbers, you know, but right. they're kind of, I actually might move it to a slow pitch softball game because some of them are getting a little older, you know, but <laughs> just, to, just to see them would be so neat, you know, and stuff like that. But, but the budget part is, that's the hard part right yeah. now. It's, you know, fundraising, nobody likes to fundraise. Well, when you, you talk know. about the cost of a bat, a oh, bat. I know. You know, know. because, uh, you know, we didn't have, well, you know, we had wood bats, but then right. they, the aluminum were just starting to come in sure. to play. So you might have a couple of aluminum bats, but I don't even, I can't even imagine what the cost of an aluminum oh. bat is today. Well, if you buy what the new models, they're like $300, $400, you know. We always buy a year-old model that's brand new, still in the cellophane, you know. Right. And, uh, and ball, you know, the baseballs are, gosh, you know, six bucks a, dot, a baseball, you know, it's just crazy. It's crazy. Can you wear, I mean, do those bats, do they wear out? Eventually they do, but you get you get a, a few years out of them. You know? I mean, and, you, you notice that no, they don't. The ball doesn't jump like it. it exactly, it, it does. It, it, really? And some kids, a lot of kids, buy their own. You know, they like to buy their own bats and stuff. So, but it is equipment's just, and you know, it's, and budgets and schools are tight yeah, nowadays. It right. is. You know, it's just. Well, tight. I can't imagine what it costs to put a catcher in equipment. Uh, brand new equipment's about three hundred and seventy-five dollars. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I know it's crazy crazy yeah so we do wear it for two or three years so <laughs> have you ever, had a, have you ever had a left-handed catcher no i haven't i haven't that's kind of there's been some teams in our league that have or know. a left-handed infielder besides first base i haven't but some teams we played against have you yeah. know so i know when you're talking about teams that you played i mean i, I think uh obviously when they're talking about team uh, players that went on to college and certainly pro i guess the name that kind of resounds around here is probably nate Nate McLeod, yeah. probably back at, back in the day. Probably the best hitter that we that we play, and we through my forty years, I, you know, I've seen a re- lot of really good hitters, but he was just different. Yeah. The the ball c- came off his bat different. It sounded different. You know, he could run like the wind. You know, and uh, it's just funny though to see how the game, how the teams. When I say have changed, yeah. I mean there were some. I mean, I think of some of the Scottville years. I mean, my goodness, there were like six kids or six five. You know, I mean, right. it's just. Just kind of neat to see how they've all changed. But. Sure. And uh, another, uh, you mentioned Walt Gakowski a, a little while ago, right. and I know you've obviously been lifelong friends. Right. And your time at Shelby. Also, you had a chance now with what they've done with, uh, I mean, you guys have all put in fantastic work at the old corner in Muskegon, the marsh right. field we're talking. And, uh, man, you brought that back to life. I've had the opportunity to go there on some summer nights. And sure. Just a night, great night out for the family. Right. And you had a chance, you got a chance to start that back up with the Muskegon Clippers and uh, work with college kids basically for the summer, keep them sharp. Is that right. kind of how that worked? Talk it to is. Talk to us about that. Yep. It was 2000, I think 14 was the first year. And 
P. Galkowski was the mastermind, you know, behind it, something that he always wanted to, always wanted to do, you know, and we got into a league that was called then the, the Michigan Collegiate League. Now we're in a, the Great Lakes League, but it's just something that Walt and I always talked about, how cool would it be to coach college kids, right. you know? And I say coach, maybe we should say manage because we're not gonna change a college kid when they sure. come from, you know, but it's just, uh, I'm not lying if I wouldn't say I've always wanted to coach that kid, you yeah, know, I mean, it's, right. just, it's just a different, you know, they may not ask what time's practice going to be done, coach. They might say, hey, can you get there early tomorrow morning with me? Right. You know, some extra ground balls. But it's just been really, really cool to do that for seven years, going on our eighth. So. And it's got to be cool to be able to kind of take that, the game of baseball to that next level. I mean, you've, now you've got players that are obviously probably the best team right. or, or at least second best team uh, player on their high school team. Right. So you can really do some things with these. You can literally exactly. manage these guys, can't Ex you? Yeah, you can. It, uh, and that's what we pretty much do. You, you manage the game. It's not like we're going to change Billy Brown's swing coming in. I mean, this college right. coach would shoot us, you know. So, right. But we just kind of manage. and they, But they want help, yeah. you know. They want, if you see something, let me know, coach, you know, this and that. And, and it's funny, the relationships you build with those kids, and Mike yeah. knows, even though it's only might be seven, eight weeks in the summer, I mean, honest to goodness, I get text messages all the time from guys that played in 17, 18. And you end up following the, them. I know, yeah. I you know. know. As a fan. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let me look in the, on, on the computer and see how he did right, yesterday. Right, right. Pretty cool. Pretty yeah. cool stuff. Do you get them one year at a time, or is there, are there, are there, are there uh, repeat players? There's been, some, there's been some repeat. Yep, we've had actually Nolan Bryant, who was a – Unbelievable player from Davenport. We actually had him three years. Okay. So, yep. And but mainly, it's usually one. Sometimes pitchers will stay two years. You know. So. And how do you assemble the team? I mean, are you contacting them? Are they saying, "Hey, coach, can I play summer ball with you?" Or how's that all going? Well, the longer we're in that league, the easier. I say easier. They contact our GM. Actually, Walt's the general manager now. Okay. Steve Cutter was the general manager, and they they're sending flyers out and our, the website in the league. There's a place where kids will send. You know. So they're. It's just, it's constant, you know, that kids will send names and they want to play, you know. And Muskegon's a great place to play in the summer. Yeah. Right on the lake shore in Marshfield is just like. Don't have to do too much summer, no, do you? No, no, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, we, I, I read so much in the newspaper now about the, the crunch regarding finding umpires, referees, and that nature. You know, do you guys in baseball see that also where in high school, uh, I, I know there's a big referee shortage in basketball. And uh, you, there's just referees are done ta being abused and know. not knowing what they're going to, you know, what kind of a place right. they're going into. A shortage with umpires in baseball. Do you guys see that? We do. We do. And there's been times where we've had the same, maybe move a JV game to another day because, you know, we couldn't get enough for varsity and JV. And a lot of, and a lot of them, I think, would rather, would rather ump softball. I'm not saying a lot of them. Quite a few of them would rather ump softball because the games are shorter usually. You know, a doubleheader in baseball can easily go four and a half hours. Right. Sometimes they get right. long, and it is. But it is a major problem, the shortage of umpires. How do, how do, we, how do we address that as, you know, with the MHSAA? How do we address that? I think, just my opinion, I wish there weren't as many doubleheaders. Everybody wants to play a doubleheader because you want to get the number of games. But I wish there were more single games. And then that might appeal to a guy, okay, I, two hours, I'm back home. Right. You know, right. rather than four, four and a half hours, you know. Sure. But all the coaches, they want more games, more games, more games, you know. And I, I think that hurts a little bit for right. umpires. And also the, the wild card in all of this is the weather. Oh. I mean, there, you know more than anybody, there have been years oh, my goodness. just horrendous. Yes. Where it seems like you only get three games in. And you're talking double headers and then trying to reschedule that, trying to figure out a pitching right. staff. Right. Oh, exactly. I mean, you know, people think you just show up and play, but there's a lot that goes into right. it, isn't there? And then to stand out in the middle of the diamond as an umpire for four and a half hours when it's about 40 degrees and the wind's <laughs> blowing at Shelby, it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> you're going, oh, there's nothing wrong with this weather. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back with Brian Wright. You've got to tune to the Power Hour here on Catchmark Sportsnet. If you own a business today, that business is exposed to digital risk. Data privacy, compliance, and of course, cyber attack risks are just a few that you may need to manage. If you don't have the staff or internal expertise to help mitigate risks your organization faces, call Catchmark Technologies at 616-384-4616. Here at the uh, North Grove Brewers in Montague, John Russell, Mike Taylor, our special guest is uh, Brian Right, Shelby, uh, 
varsity baseball coach and all around good guy. And I wanna thank you, stop on down and uh, come on and got, we're here for another 20 minutes or so. Also Van Dyke Mortgage and Shepherd and Shepherd is uh, our sponsors here tonight. I want to talk to you a little bit, Brian, about just baseball in general and the health of baseball. I mean, I, I think we're all of the generation where, like you said, you, I always tell the story. They used to run us off of, uh, in Muskegon, off of fields. We would play Indian ball or whatever. You, you know, very seldom could you right. get 18 kids, right. but you right. could do something exactly. you know, to, to, to play a game. And they would chalk the field. And, of course, we thought, hey, a chalk exactly. field. Exactly. And they would run you off. But I'm going to tell you, when I started coaching Pony League with my brother here, back in the 1990s started noticing it then there those fields were laying empty yeah. and I, I think soccer came in and now you see a Saturday you see 14 soccer fields and kids running all over the place I mean there is a, there is just a, a just a general downturn I guess in participation in baseball isn't there a little bit a little bit you know and and, and I think there's a couple reasons why um, one you, baseball can be a boring sport for little, for younger players. You know, if you don't, if, if the practices are, you know, just one person's doing something, the kids picking dandelions out and right. out. Right. You know, where whether it's soccer, everybody's running, everybody's kicking. Right, you right. know, so you really, I think we really got to be careful, keeping those kids, you know, attention going. You know, um, and and I remember back when when I was younger. I mean, if you weren't at the little league field by ten o'clock, you didn't get in the game. Yeah. So you may. Yeah. And today there's just. And I know everybody's going to blame electronics, and I'm sure it has something to do with it too. You sure. know, there, there's so many other things to do for that. There's there's summer basketball, which is great. I'm yeah. not saying nothing. You know, there's just so many different choices, and I sometimes think baseball sometimes gets put in the back burner. Travel, every sport has travel. Travel hockey, travel basketball, travel baseball, you know. And, and travel baseball is great, don't get me wrong, but... You don't touch as many kids, say, in your high school program. Like, I've got one, I've got one, two kids playing travel baseball. One is 35 miles to Muskegon one way, back and forth, you know. And it's, I think, closer to the cities make it easier, you know. And uh, before, it used to be just your high school teams would have something going in the summer, you know. And, and unfortunately, I think that's hurt a little bit. Um, not that travel ball hasn't helped kids. It has. Don't right, get me wrong right. with that. But, but participation, I think, it might have something to do with it. So. Well, it's amazing to see on a, on a weekend. Any, you can pick any weekend in June, July, and August and go to a, 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 a Little League baseball complex now. And there are teams from all over. Yep, I and, know. I mean, it is, it is a business right. to get your kids involved in travel baseball. Know. You know where I – where we grew up – and you know the, the the clowns I grew up with. We've been together since we were four or five years old. Right. But I'm going to tell you what. When we talk about the difference, and, and John and I talk about it a lot, you go to playgrounds, and you see kids just uh, they are they migrate there to do pickup games. Right. We used to, you know, you, you go okay. Well, basketball you can play one on one. Right. You need two people in a hoop. Right. You can play two on two. Exactly. Football you can even go. You know two on two with a you know we 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 do that with those little football sure we used to brian we used to play wolf ball just, and nerf ball yeah okay and when we played with a nerf ball we played with we had little string fences we had string down for the infield if you hit it down in the infield it was an out if it hit in here and here you know but you learn at playing two on two or one against one okay we used the skinny wiffle ball bats uh -huh. with a wolf. And I'm going to tell you what, that's how we learned to hit curveballs. I know. Breaking I, balls. I was going to say, you both know Joe Klett, I'm friends, yeah. both, friends with both you guys. You know, he's my best friend growing up, you know. Oh, my goodness. We played wiffle ball by the hours. And like you say, how do you hit a curveball? By playing wiffle ball. You know, exactly. exactly. You, you, you learn how to track it. Yes. Yeah. You know, but I'm like, you guys can't be, you know, you guys can't be serious. You played six hours of wiffle ball today. Right. Yeah. You know. I know. I, we I didn't have a game at night. Ball. I didn't have a game right. at night, you right. know. And you know, and back to travel a little bit. Not everybody can afford travel ball. Right. Right. They really can't, you know. And that's and that's too bad, yeah. you know, because then that that kid that really loves baseball, there's some years he doesn't he doesn't play. He doesn't get right. to play as much. So. Right. And that's why you you know you see kids that maybe come from out, you know, in rural areas. Yeah. Right. You know they 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 aren't afforded that luxury of being included. Right. You know, because of either where they live or how much money their parents make sure. or, or the travel issues. Exactly. You know, it's not cheap to buy gas. That, right. And they could be every good as, bit as good athlete as 
the kid that's been playing, you right. know, travel ball. So, you know, and, and that is a that is an interesting uh, uh, demographic or whatever you want to say. Is Mike and I grew up in cities. I mean, you're Kalamazoo. I was Muskegon. Right. So had neighborhoods. So, you know, you go down, hey, you want to get, some, get a baseball game? Right. Right? You go door to door. Right. I always liked just the putting the game together. Yeah, I know. I mean, first exactly. of all, you got to get enough guys. Like I said, you're not going to get 18 right. guys. Right. But maybe you can get seven guys. And maybe sure. you can. And just the, the management of, okay, how are we going to play this game? Kind of might got into exactly. that a little bit. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to kill a field over here. Right. You, if you hit it to the right. left field, it's going to be wrong. Oh, I know. And, or if you had a, you know, or switch hit or whatever. I mean, exactly. It, it, exactly. It, so I think that was all team building stuff oh, too, wasn't it? No doubt. And it, talk about kids leading, organizing, yeah. you know, and this and that. I, I very much think so. Exactly. So living in the country or in a rural area, right. like I said, Mike and I could go across the street find you know two or three right. kids or whatever right. i mean that, that's a challenge oh, exactly. in so exactly. how, how did how did you guys overcome all of that stuff well, you know growing up there was in muskegon there was almost like it was like an all-star team it was it was it was called fop fraternal order of police okay. and he took the best albert fernandez was the coach he was a local policeman and, and he took the best kids from the area and it was just it was american legion we were 18 years and yet 17 or 18 okay. And we went to Grand Rapids and played two a week. We played a doubleheader in Muskegon, you know. And, but same thing. Uh, all my good kids on my high school team, there was just there were two of us. Joe played and I played. Everybody else, they didn't play in the summer, you right. know. And so, unfortunately, that's just the way. Even back then, yeah. you know, it was the way it was. So. Yeah. Were, were you a – I was a baseball geek. I mean, to this day, not so much – I kind of got out of pro baseball right. a little bit uh, right. for whatever reason. But back in the day – I remember we used to get the Sunday paper, the Grand Rapids Press, and I would I would lay that on the floor in the living room. Right. And they had a stats page. I think you know where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, I do. Where they literally had everybody. I mean everybody. Right. You, you could have a 304, you know, a, a 340 <laughs> right. hitter, right. all the way down to zero zero Ray Euler. I, I know. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and and I would sit there and watch the, you know, what, look at all that type of stuff. Were, right. were you? Were you oh that, God, you love the number that too. I remember my mother always saying, if you could remember your history notes as much as you could your baseball stuff, <laughs> yeah. it might have been an A student, you know. <laughs> well, see, you were figuring out math. Yeah, and there we go. There we go. And stuff. Yeah, always use Before that. I forget, I want to mention something that uh, this year is our 75th year that we've had baseball at Shelby High School. Wow. So on our hats, we've got, there's going to be a little thing, you know, Team 75. So I just think that's kind of oh, that cool. neat. You know, I went back in the old yearbooks, you know. I mean, there were some years they played four games. You know, but they were they considered a, a baseball team. You know, you talk about when you were when you were young growing up, and and uh, you know, I was able to wear. I remember this glove and and this glove, but there's always at some point in your in your life, Brian, when you go, I got an A two thousand or something. You exactly. know that you go, I, I you know, yeah. junior year of high school. There we go. That's junior what I want to hear about. Junior year of high school. Yep. Say, yeah. oh my gosh, that it seemed like I didn't put that glove down. I mean. And we used to play catch, you know, Joe, back to Joe Coletta. I mean, we played catch by the hours, mm -hmm. you know. And today, I hate to say it, kids don't throw the ball enough, yeah. you know. And uh, But, yeah, that A2000, oh, my goodness, that just felt like back of your hand. You know, one thing that – and I, I want to see where you kind of weigh in on this today – analytics in baseball. I mean, it, it used to be, the, you know, the Ted Williams switch. And, and, and right, rightfully so, right? right? And now you're seeing a switch on a guy that's a, a 210 hitter. I, I mean, know. everybody's switching. Is, 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 it, is it too much? I mean, just your personal view, is it too much? Or? Yes, I do. I do think. And, and trust me, and I don't know all the analytics yeah. like some of these people right. do, but I've been listening to some older guys on MLB Network, and they said it's going to come back full circle. Mm -hmm. You know, for five, six years ago, everything was, you know, launch angle. you got to get to bat. Yeah. Well, what's happening? Strikeout after strikeout after strikeout, you right. know. It's still, you got to catch the ball. you got to try to hit the ball square. Right. You know, I sometimes think we can put too much behind, you know, it's still a game. I yeah. mean, you know, you still got to pitch it, throw it, catch it, and all that, you know. So Where do you, The guys like Rod Carew. Yeah. Oh. You, you know, the, the, the Pete Roses that – you know, they're 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 about the average spraying exactly. the ball with Tony Gwynn. Exactly. You know. And to watch some of the ways some of these guys swing when it's an 0-2 count or a 1-2, they're swinging for the fences. Those old, those guys, Rod Crew didn't want to strike out. No. You know, I mean, those no. guys, you know, they battled to the end. Well, to your point with Rod Crew, I remember going to Tiger Stadium. Oh. And uh, you could back then you could watch batting practice, right? Right. right. I'd get there early with my dad and we'd uh. be sitting down there. And Rod Crew would actually, I don't know if you watched the Twins in person, but Rod Carew would do this. He would, you know, he'd do his regular swings, and then 
bunt down the first baseline, yeah. bunt down the third baseline. But mm. I mean, who? I now, know. Wh- who now? Puts I know. Bunts and batting I know. practice. You know, I, I mean, they're swinging for the fences. Exactly. And I watched that, and I thought, wow, that is. And you know, this, that's this, that doubt. That's that money. Yeah. You know, that agents tell them, you know, hey, if you can get to 35, 30 home runs or whatever. It's going, you know, it's too bad, you yeah. know, because I hit and running, you know, and stolen base. Yeah. The stolen base is down in Major League Baseball than what it used to be, you right. know. So. But, I mean, do you, when you coach at, a, in a high, at the high school level, do you play, you look, hey, I, I want to get a run here. Oh. I, I want to get one. We have know, to because if I, if I set back for a three-run home run, it could be a few weeks, you <laughs> yeah. know. So we're going to try to. We're gonna to try to scratch and get a run at a time, you know. And we got a so. fabricator. We got a guy who just got to walk. We need that run right exactly. now. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so we looked at getting him to third base, and we, we talk ninety feet at a time. Anytime we can get a free ninety, whether it's a ball in the dirt, we're trying to go. You know. So. And again, talk, I don't know if you guys. I know they have some youth leagues up in Shelby, but are are you fortunate enough to have feeder programs? We do. In it, summer rec we leagues. We do. We've got rec leagues, and it goes all the way through eighth grade. There's a middle school league, and we've. You know, and I've had some dads, too, that have taken teams down here, which has been nice. You know, that's that's what you have to have. You know, it's, you just, you're so thankful when you can get some dads or, you know, uncles or whatever that will get a group of kids together and play in a few tournaments, you know. And just because you can't do it all yourself, you know, you right. can't do it all yourself. And, and I've had some wonderful helpers with that, you know. So Talk to us about your staff. This year, this year my assistant's Garrett Wallers. First time, he, he was a former player. He actually, he has a son that's a 10th grader that, was on the team last year as a freshman. Um, my JV coach is Dan Samuels, and who helps Dan out is Tim Kurgis. Tim's helped him out for, geez, five or six years, you know. So, it, uh, it's, you know, it's hard because games are at 4 o'clock. Yeah. You know, and some guys don't get done work till 5 o'clock, sure. you know, to, to get those volunteers. And I look back, guys, over the years, unbelievable. I've had some, you know, from the Les Gowles to the Scott Lunds mm-hmm. to the Pranger. You know, oh my, I've had so many wonderful helpers, you know, and, Cause you can't do it alone. I'm gonna be first to admit, I, I haven't done it alone. You gotta have those guys that help, and I've had them. Yeah, you've had you have I've had, had some, some good wonderful ones. ones. Some wonderful ones. So. You know, that's yeah, oh. that's crazy. Maybe you can get John up there to help you out. Hey, right here. I, you bet. <laughs> I could put him in first I, base I, box. You bet. <laughs> I could be the weight gaining coach. You got some skinny players up there anyway. Uh, <laughs> drink you know, more milk, yeah. and move less. Right. Yeah, that's you know, I, it's funny how the number of games have changed. I remember. <laughs> senior year we went to the state finals and we were 23 and 3 26 games now you can play 38 regular season games 38 38 Holy smokes. how do you have the pitching for yeah. that it, it, a lot of years we can't i don't i won't schedule you know there's no way would i schedule 38 if i've got you know three or four arms you know but there's been there were a year we went 34 and 6 you know we i think we had 36 <clears throat> scheduled naturally some get rained out right, you know right. but it is it's all about pitching now there's a pitch limit yeah. You know, with a certain amount of pitches, if you throw, you got to rest that many days. So, do you agree is, with that? I do. I think the numbers are a little low, though. I mean, 103 pitches, you've got to rest then. You got three complete days. I, I think that could be like 110. I think 103 is a little low, but that's just me, you know. Well, and to that point, is there some negotiation possibly going on where you know the coaches can get together and kind of tweak things a little bit like you said maybe maybe a few more pitches or is it is and they've it, talked about that at our yeah. association where they you know they they everybody uh, not everybody buys into that we it's like did you not trust us i'm not going to wreck a kid's arm you know but I, i'm right. sure some kids have arms have been wrecked but there, it's been talked at our association that you know it'd be nice if we could just increase it a few pitches you know because yeah. 103 it's hard to get seven innings sometimes oh, sure. you know yeah exactly so. How are you doing for numbers on the team, and especially Shelby? I mean, you know, a, a yeah. smaller school, and you know we see this football or right. other sports where basketball. Some, I know. Yeah, where some Rick's teams got can't nine even, this year, I think. Yeah, so where some teams can't even they're dropping JVs. Right. It um, just seems like lately we've been in that that 12, 13, which you know it's, but you just don't you don't get the depth, the numbers like we you know we used to. Right. But there's some young classes coming up that that a lot of kids play. You know, so it's just it's just one of those things too, and. And, and unfortunately, sometimes in the spring, we fight that, that thing about it's the third sport. And some kids, I, I was never one of those. I mean, I right, could play, right. but some, they don't want to do three because yeah. sometimes they're tired by the kids to come spring. And it's, sometimes I think we've had some kids not play maybe because of that or whatever, but yeah. I don't know. It's just How about, you know, when you see a, a smaller schools, Brian, do you, do you see uh, where kids are allowed to play two sports in the same season? We don't get that in Ireland. Now there could be somebody. I don't. There could be somebody doing track and baseball. I don't know, but 
Um, I don't. We don't see it in our league very much, if at all. Um, it would just be so hard if, if someone say was on the golf team, and had to go- practice golf all the time. He had to practice baseball. I just, I think it'd be too hard. You know. I mean, are, I don't know. Are we coming to a time, Brian? Um, that maybe we got to watch the offerings of sports. I mean, are we? I mean, I know it's always know been saying. before. I know. It's always been. Hey, the more the merrier. Let, let's just be inclusive. Let's see how much we can get. But I with know. with battling for the athletes, and that's not really the right, right. word. I don't mean no. that. But is there a time where you might have to relook at, at sports offerings? And I know, I know that there's a. You know, you, you have to have so many sports to belong to certain leagues right. too. So right. that, that plays into it as well. So right. any thoughts on I that? I know. You hope it doesn't get to that, but you know, you look and right now we're—I mean, we're not super big number-wise mm-hmm. in it. Uh, there's just not—not not many sports have just an overabundance. You know, we're probably not going to cut. We won't have to cut this year. You know, right. and you know, you look at—we have—we have baseball, we have track, we have golf. It is you know, just those three in the spring, right? Golf, yeah. but, so three sports, but it's that pool of athletes. Yeah. You're drawn from a pool of athletes, sure. you know, and sometimes we're not drawn from a huge pool, you know, and that's that's the hard part. And I don't want to be that grumpy old man or anything like that, but you mentioned cuts, and I think we all went through it. I mean, it was it was not a foregone conclusion that you were going to make a baseball team, right. a football team, right. or whatever. I mean, you had to try out, and you got cut, and you weren't happy about it, right. but you had to deal with it. Right. Society has changed a little bit. I mean, now it's you know it's kind of the era of the participation trophy or entitlement, and, and exactly and that type of stuff. Exactly. You know, you, you, fortunately or unfortunately, right. you're in a position where you don't have to cut because right. they don't have the numbers anyhow. Right. Not a lot. Some years. I mean, we, I have certainly through the years have had you know because I I, mean, I can't you can't keep 17 kids. Right. You know, with the number, it's just hard to get those kids to play. You want to be fair to them, you yeah. know. And, uh, but did you start noticing a difference in when, when you were cutting players of over the years that all of a sudden it was there was an acceptability to it maybe before they didn't like it right but also maybe that jarred them to say okay I got to work a little right. harder to try to make this next year and then I guess I'm not saying so much I, for the kids but maybe the parents even, right all right of a sudden, did you see a oh, change I, I, or a, a little bit sure you know right now I think entitlement Mike used that word entitlement you know and. Uh, and that's where you really want to talk about, you know, when you're on that team, there's a role. Your yeah. role might only be, you know, maybe you're going to pinch hit, you right. know, in the seven or whatever, you know, or not everybody's always going to play. You know, you want everybody right. to play a lot, but sometimes it just doesn't work that way, you know, sure. and you want, but it is hard. But, you know, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and then you, t- you talk about that with kids, you know, your role. People have to understand the job of a varsity coach, the, the, the district wants you to win. Right. They right. expect you to win. Right. Okay. And, you know, we're, that is our goal here. We go out here, we practice to win games. Right. And the kids got to understand this. <laughs> right. You know, at the right. JV level and, you know, whatever. We, exactly. You know, we, we have maybe we've right. got a different, uh, you know. Right. And you, can, and you can do that, you know, Mike, as long as you've coached. I mean, you can still – have that drive, you know, and and you can still certainly play kids, you know, right. but it's, but there, if sometimes Johnny wants more at bats, you know, well, sometimes Johnny's got to stay after a little bit and work, you know, right. try to get a little bit better in certain areas, you know, so. And, and obviously communication, it, it sounds like a no brainer, but communication between a coach and players, even coaches, I guess, and parents now, or maybe, right. I don't know. Right. Um, but that it's is important. so, so it important, is. isn't it? It is important, you know, and you really got to, and I, and I even the, ki- the the player today, I think you really gotta you gotta communicate. I'm not saying we didn't have to communicate with them 30 years ago, right. but uh, I think you really gotta communicate with them now, just because that same problem. You know, you you want them to buy in, right. and that buying in might be Mike Taylor might he might only get 25 at bats this year, but you know, I want him to buy in, and you're an important part, Mike, and blah blah, you know, this and that, and it's you gotta get those kids to buy in, and it is. It's, yeah. it's hard sometimes. Yeah. You know, you kind of alluded to it. I don't know if we were on the air yet or we were just talking before where you said, you know, hey, you know, if, if I was a, if, if I had a problem with a coach or the coach had a problem with me and, you know, I'm, on, I'm not going to go home and, and cry to mom right. and dad about it, right. you know, and because mom and dad are going to say, well, you probably deserve right. it. I mean, exactly. I know I was in that situation. Right. But again, times do kind times of have change, changed. They, they have. They have changed, you know, and it, uh, we all love our kids and we want what's best for our kids, you know, but. And sometimes you want them to, to believe us that we're not going to do anything. We're not trying to do anything to hurt their, ch- their right. son either, you know. And so, what do you think? Uh, I know another area is is pitch count so much, and I, I got to admit, I get tired of they even have the graphic I know, now. I know that 
He's thrown two pitches. The game's just started. I know. Two. I know. I think, oh, man, I know. come on now. They worry so much about the pitch yeah, count. I they mean, do. I, I realize that you want to protect the arms, and I, I go back to the old school guys, the Mickey Lolich, as I always say, they threw 100 pitches oh, in my the bullpen goodness. before exactly. the game. You know? Exactly, exactly. Um, where, where do you weigh in on, on, on all of that pitch I think, count? I certainly think that, I mean, arm care is very, very important, you right. know, but there's, a, there's been some studies that sometimes the pitchers aren't throwing enough which sometimes will cause arm, you know, right. major leagues, five innings, and it's like, oh, man, he's, he's done a great job, you know. And yeah. it, uh, So did Mickey Lolich have any more arm trouble than the guys are today? Right. You know, so I think there, there's that money again, though, guys, those agents coming in, and they don't want that. that I, I, can't ima- yeah, I can't imagine a, uh, a coach telling his basketball player, look, we only, you can only shoot eight times. Right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, we don't, we, we don't want to go there with this. Right, so right. Have a shot, or a shot <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, to your point, too, is, okay, how do you, how do you I mean, uh, the thought was you strengthen your arm by using it, right? Right, right. And, and so you're throwing a little bit more. I mean, if you're, if you're gearing even younger kids to throwing 30 pitches or right. whatever it is, do they ever fully develop their arm? I oh, guess I that's a chicken and the egg yeah, type it is, of thing, isn't it? It is. It is. Because I don't know. I still think, you know, I still think pitchers want to throw harder. They want to, th- you got to throw more. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying you, you abuse that arm, but right. I mean, you've got to build that up. You know, there was a Atlanta Braves had a pitching coach, Leo Mazzoni. He was a huge believer in throw. I mean, those guys yeah. threw almost not the next day but that second day they're doing their bullpens you know so I can't I can't imagine anybody when we had Mickey Lolich on and he talked to us about what he went through and was it 68 or 67 or 9 so, yeah and the I championship year yeah and I'm like yeah holy smokes right were was it out just outrageous yep how many you know how much he pitched oh yeah. exactly you know, in one year yeah and, uh, and those guys went deep i mean now that's why i think it's so hard to hit in the major leagues yes i mean the starter goes five now you now you may face two or three relievers every time you come up right. i mean back in the day those guys would throw nine and you all your at bats were against that starting pitcher you right. know so exactly so it's just different there yeah, yeah it's it's different now and now you got you got pitchers that are built in a quality oh my start. gosh yes well, it's called six innings or something yeah like mclean yeah. mclean the year he won 31, 31 games, games yeah. he lost three games in extra innings that he was still pitching yeah. i know unbelievable yeah. unbelievable you know i know i'm like yep exactly yeah, the oh, and he really goes off on it too, though. He oh, does. I bet. Oh, he, yep. he's he got an opinion about that. Yep. You know, I want to I want to ask you about this. Um, you know, you you enjoy teaching and you 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 love teaching and coaching and all that. Talk us talk us about when you found out you were going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. How how where were you? How did you receive the news on that? I was I was actually home. I was actually reading the living room i don't know what i was reading who knows what i was reading you know and i just got a the phone. john russell story i yeah, was reading it, it was that a same story thing. john russell it exactly book, yeah. yeah and uh <laughs> it was one of the guys on the executive board and uh, he called and uh and informed me of that news you know and it was pretty it was weird it was a it was a pretty cool feeling you know and, who was the uh, first person you called geez, I, it had to have been because i'm trying to think with my uh it had to have been mom my mom and dad, uh, you know, I mean, my, my wife was right there, you know, right, so I certainly right. told her, you know, and in that whole Hall of Fame thing was, that was quite a, that was pretty, pretty surreal, you know, I mean, I remember that, the banquet, I was the fifth speaker at the time, you know, and, and there's no state championships on my agenda, unfortunately, you know, we right, try hard, right. you know, I'm following guys that have won three state championships, two state, you know, I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> sweat's kind of going, but I thought, I'm going to use that. Yeah, I made own. that, I made those yeah. possible for you yeah. guys. <laughs> I'm going to use that as my opening line, you know, I'm going to say, hey, you know, I really appreciate blah, 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 but I'm sorry to say I don't, you're not going to hear about state championships, you know, but kind of eased me a little bit. But it was it was pretty cool. It was pretty just a neat, neat thing, you know, and they have like a thing down in Comerica Park where there's one hole, all the Hall of Fame people. And Isn't that great? It yeah. is. It's pretty cool. We got Well, we got four, three other guys in our league are in the Hall of Fame. Paul Harriman's, Brandon yeah. Berry, and Warren Zweigel, you know, so that's pretty yeah. cool to, out of eight eight teams you know eight schools former in the hall of fame so it was neat i was pretty proud yeah and that fraternity of coaching i mean i i 
see it with Mike all oh, the time exactly. from the football. Season. Right. And obviously you have that with coaching too with the, you know, you mentioned Joe Coletta. Right. Friends forever. Exactly. And, uh, you know, Mr. Swigel, yep. those guys. I mean, it just to be able to oh, and, play against them, compete against them, and just call them friends. Yeah, that's, that's it's something, neat. Isn't it's it? like, so that's why it's fun to go to our annual, annual clinic. You know, I'll see guys from the east side or someone who I might have coached with in the All-Star game at Comerica yeah. 2003. I, I coached in that. And it's just kind of neat. You just, you build those forever bonds, yeah. you know, and, uh, so, you know, I'm going to kind of go back and, you know, we've looped around the block a little bit. You get your, you get your first teaching assignment at Shelby. You're the head coach at Shelby. How did your father feel about that and mother? Were, were they up in Shelby all the time supporting your program and going, oh, my God, this is, you know. They, they were, but it was funny. You know, my dad's a baseball guy, and I remember when I told him like, I'm going to coach the varsity baseball at Shelby, he kind of looked at me and goes, you are? <laughs> no, and not in a bad way, but I mean, because we are, you know, right. just that Shelby wasn't a baseball power. They had good teams. I yeah. mean, when, when Rick was there, they had some good teams. They won a district championship. And, and uh, but he knew I didn't have a JV team and, you know, yeah. stuff like that. And I said, yeah, I am, you know, but they would come to the games and it, uh, you know, they just supported it to the end, you know, and it, uh, like I say, I'd like to do some of those teams over. We all would. Remember, yeah. Mike, some of your football teams? I'm sure you'd like to coach over you know and yeah. stuff yeah, but well, if, if you knew then what yeah, you know now that exactly. Yeah. exactly exactly yeah, but you know it's you know again at the time you are just you know you're trying to you're trying to take the kids one step forward yeah. right. at a time and you're not you have nothing to compare it to other than trying to be better than you know provide better facilities for right. the kids than the year before right you know and improve upon your program and the bad part one of the one of the negative things about getting that coaching job right out of college I I didn't work underneath anybody so I didn't work underneath another coach you know another baseball coach so you kind of take from what you just learned at Grand Valley yeah. and you know I love Phil Regan dearly but he wasn't a breakdown kind of guy let's yeah. break down let's break it down into parts then in the hole so he's that's where clinics and I read books you know I would you know just started beating the trail down yeah, there, there you there know there was no template for you was no there? exactly I mean, you were creating your right. own as you went huh? exactly exactly uh, we only got a few minutes here, so I, I kind of want to get, and it was going back to the, the whole thing about less kids on the playground and things like that. What do you see for the future of baseball? Obviously, the Dominican has been really rich with the team. I mean, you, you look at a roster anymore, and it's, right. you know, I don't know, 60% Dominican, so right. that, it's always been good there. You know. Getting It's really, truly an international game now. you got the Japanese are getting more and more involved and things like that. So maybe that's what's keeping us alive a little bit, you know, even though there's a kind of a falling down here in America. But as you kind of look at the landscape of, of baseball in the future, how, how do you see it, it? Are you optimistic? Well, I am, but yet I'm. there's a part of me that's scared, a little scary about it, you know, because it's – I think it's I think it's the greatest game. Just there's right. no clock, you right. know, and you, it's not like I can kneel at the end or I can run a delay with my back, you know, the basketball. There right. is no clock, but but if if the youth coaches if they can't make it interesting and keep it active going, I think some kids they don't want to do it. It's just not, you know, I can run around on the soccer field, nothing against soccer or the basketball court. Right. It's it, it it comes from the parents. Parents. Yeah. If parents didn't play baseball, or if they didn't play softball, if the mom didn't play, right. there might not be any interest there, you know. And uh, and we've all had kids, you know. I've had kids that their dad never played, and I said, "Did you ever play catch with your dad?" And yeah. never really did, you know. Yeah, and I'm not right. the only school to ever say, you know. Sure. It uh, that's where you, you've got to keep getting those key people that will, you know, will keep it going. I guess is yeah. what I'm saying, you know. And that's the that's the sad part about it, you know. And that is kind of the battle of. You know, as I watch MLB Network and all that, where okay, you got to have a, a watch here, and we got to do this, and we got to have so much time. These to do uniforms, this. some of these travel teams wear. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I wish we had them. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm yeah. saying it's great. It's and, and you just wonder at what point, okay, you're tweaking, and I get that, and you might have to speed things up, but right. at what point do you do that at the cost of the game? I know. Or, you know, I know. It's, it's, I know. It's. Uh, uh, there's no good answer. No, I guess. there isn't. It's just a. Uh, it's scary. I, I will probably be long gone by then, John. And if you know what I mean, I mean as long as they're playing baseball yeah, for there we go. few years, right, right. Yeah. right. So I kind of when you look, uh, I don't know, five, ten years down the road, okay, and uh, I don't know, you're the, you're the second longest tenured teacher I've ever heard of in the state of Michigan. I mean, Ted Duckett's got on year number fifty down in Kalamazoo. Really? And uh, and you're right up there. I mean, not far behind him, but you know, and, and Ryan, you. Okay, I'm gonna. It's time for me to walk away from the education and the coaching. At that point in time, you get to reinvent yourself. Okay, baseball's been a part of your life forever. 
I call okay. myself a baseball lifer. Yeah. You know? And you are. And so right. that going, that's where I'm going with this is where do you see your next venture? I mean, what is, what is, where does your mind kind of traveled and said, you know, I think I'd like to go to Grand Valley and, and become an assistant down there and work with pitchers or work with uh, the bullpen or, you know, in some specific, you know, specific area. You know. I mean, I, I don't know. That's interesting. But I, and, and we won't know until that time comes, but I actually think when, when I know that it's time, I think it will be time that I'm going to, you know, that because I'll, I'll be done with the Clippers by then. I'll be done with base, high school baseball. And I, I don't see myself other than maybe working with my granddaughters. I got two granddaughters, you know. Um, I don't see myself going farther, you know, with yeah. that. I mean, now whether it could be given lessons at extra innings or something like Can't, that. Are you able to say no? I'm telling you, when, some, I, when someone knocks be, on that door. I know. It'll be hard. It'll be hard. And, <laughs> you know. And, and I thank the good Lord that uh, I married my beautiful wife, Kelly, that she is, she's been behind me in all this. You know, right. there's a lot of women that would have said, you know, Brian, I think it's time. She's to, a perfect coach's wife. She is. She yeah. is. And uh, so she's allowed me to fulfill this dream of my big time right here, you know, and, uh, and stuff. So This is your house of dreams. It yeah. is. It is. You know, yep. I just can't see you. When all these people and contacts you have, when they hear, okay, you're, you're walking away from Shelby. I, I, you're now, you might be walking away from Shelby, but they think you're going to be walking to something else, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you're going to get those calls. You're going to get those knocks on the door. And I don't know, with the you love know. of the game like you have. It will be hard to, 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 put a, to close the door on it. It will I mean, be. Like I'm not going to say I am. Kelly, so. I got a phone call. That yeah. I mean, I know, <laughs> right. I know where this you is going to go. You can only mow grass so long. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we hope that's a, right. a ways. And you're healthy. Action. I mean, yeah. you know, basically, you, yep. you, know, you got a knee you need knee to replace. in August, but I'm, hey, still throw BP Fantastic. every day, you yeah. know. So. Well, Brian, this was a this was great. An hour I slipped by here. It, it slipped by for us. Hope it was for it you. Was. It wasn't. Hope it, was. it wasn't work. Like I say, you guys are you guys do a wonderful job. Oh, thanks, High school Brian. sports and covering in the area. It's uh, you guys do a wonderful job, and I'm happy for you guys. Always a pleasure seeing you, Brian. Thank you very much, and yep. uh, we appreciate that. Hey, we appreciate you folks as well. It's another edition of the uh, Power Hour Down and Out. Heavy on the down and out, Mike. <laughs> we want to thank North Grove of Brewers, Van Dyke Mortgage, and Shepherd and Shepherd. Billy Mann, our fantastic uh, engineer as well. Until next week, have yourself a good night, everybody.